Um, I'd like to this evening to give you a, a good flavour about what the richness of Catmus. There's a lot that goes on here that many parents actually don't realise because, of course, having teenage children, they'll come home and they'll say it was OK when actually they've had a brilliant day. Um, and so I want to get through some of the richness of, of the college. And to start with, I've um, had a film commissioned. Um, commissioned by two 13-year-old students, actually, three of them, who have put this film together to give you an idea about what life in a typical day is like. And I think it gives a real flavour of um, many characteristics of the college. I'm going to start with that. <laughs> Welcome to our college.
think you'll agree, quite remarkable that three 13-year-old boys put that together. Um, very, very high quality, and of course, that's what we look for in every single thing that we do at this college, the best. Um, and of course, it's highlighted two aspects for me. Uh, first of all, of course, the buildings. We're very fortunate to be in a brand new building, 25 million pounds worth, um, a bespoke building as well. It's not a, a flat pack school, this one. It was designed specifically for our community to really get the best out of each and every student. It's of course award winning. It was uh, awarded a, a REBA, a Royal Institute of British Architects Award. We were com competing with Loughborough University, Uppingham School, and nationally actually, and of course uh, we came out on top. Um, but more than that actually, the, the thing that makes, I think, um, great schools are not necessarily the buildings. I think great schools are made by the people within them and the talents they might have. And that is certainly the case here. What we do have, however, with this building is something that doesn't limit the aspirations we might have for our students or for each other. If we want to be able to do something here, we can. We have the facilities and we have the equipment. But it's talent, I think, we're best at. We recognise that every student has talent. And it might be like Tom here, who looks like he's learning to fly, and of course he's, he's on the trampoline. Um, but equally, um, it may well be that your talent lies somewhere else, perhaps in performance. This is Alice, our production last year. Um, this was a key stage three production, so this was just the first three year groups of the college. However, there were 200 students involved. Um, you saw in the, the film how the theatre can open up and go all the way through. Well, I can promise you every single bit of it was used, including the Heller Up. And of course, it's not just what goes on at front of house in a production. We do back of house as well. Our students do the, the lighting, the sounds, the choreograph choreography of the dancing, the music. And the music is, it's not... Um, karaoke, it's a live orchestra playing the West End, full West End script. Um, next year we're, we're looking to put on um, We Will Rock You, uh, which of course is the Queen musical, my favourite, and of course what a great score, and that will be live here uh, in the summer performed by our students, choreographed by our students, directed by our students and to a standard that you'd be happy to go and see on the West End because that's what we aim for. And these two students, of course, are um, playing the flute, the flute ensemble, um, at our Christmas concert, um, which we ha have every year. And, of course, it involves a large number of students performing both music and drama and making speeches, which we think is important. We also compete. We're not afraid of competition at the college. In fact, we thrive on it. We compete with each other, we compete locally, and we compete nationally. And we go out to win. We go to the Andal Music Festival, for example, where we're competing with other local independent and grammar schools um, for, of course, the best music musicians. Um, more than drama, of course, um, speaking is important. You'll hear quite a lot of speaking tonight from myself, um, from Billy and Poppy in a moment, our head boy and head girl. Um, this was our senior youth speaks team last year. I think we had about four teams. And they went and competed, again, mainly against independent schools and grammar schools. This is the, the, them at the regional final, um, where they beat, and I won't name the independent schools, but suffice to say they're local, and they didn't do quite as well as our students. Hence why we have the big trophy. Um, however, I think craft is also important, and those fine skills. In too many schools, it's more design than craft. <laughs> And actually here, we're, we're very, very privileged to have a very specialist teacher who can teach things like wood turning. And that's, I think, important, those traditional skills. But alongside that, with us, rests the new technology. I think that also sums up Catmus, a mixture of the very traditional and new technology. And so, for example, in technology, you might well use a lathe, as this student is, but you might also use our rapid prototyper where you use a bit of CAD CAM software to design something, say a car or a shoe, and instead of printing out on a piece of paper, you print out a model in 3D that works. And it's that combination, I think, which is really important, so that you don't forget where we've come from, or those traditions, but also you're always looking to the future as well. We have an expertise in the arts. We're very well known for it. As you have a wander around the college later, have a look at the walls. Look at the quality of the work on display. Some of it is professional. 
professional artists who've loaned us their work. I challenge you, though, sometimes to spot the difference because, again, the quality of it is so high. This young man is doing his GCSE. He's doing painting and drawing. But, of course, within the arts, there's a number of disciplines that students can apply themselves to. This year, we've introduced GCSE photography for the first time because we think that creative people are successful people and the art is a great way to harness that creativity. But many students, like me, I'm a <laughs> physicist, um, have a great love of the academic subject as well. And we do exceptionally well there. And again, we're very fortunate to have specialist teachers, physics, chemistry and biology, for example, who are able to really stretch students and get the best out of them. Some of you will be really fortunate, and you'll be talented at lots of things. And that's OK too, because what we aim to do is whatever your talents are, is if you don't know what they are, help you find them. And once you know what they are, make sure that you do your absolute best, so that when you leave here, you're ready for the next steps. It's one thing to discover talent, I think. It's another thing to really engage with it and develop it. And that's why at Catmus, we think that we need to make sure that students leave here with those moments that they will never forget. That have helped them get interested in something, that have engaged them, have given them a lifelong hobby, or actually a profession perhaps. And we do that in a number of ways. And if you look closely at this young man who's watching Tom fly, you can have a look at what he's thinking about. His latest science experiments, of course. And so that was an experiment that actually I was doing in my lab only last week. And if, you, if you're interested, actually, if you go up to science, this and a number of other um, experiments are going on. Um, I can assure you they've all been fully risk assessed. Um, it looks far more dangerous than it actually is. But nevertheless, it really engages students and get them talking about science and engage. And that's what we attempt to do in every lesson. But we also recognise that it's not just what goes on in the lessons that are important. There is a life beyond the classroom. And there again, we do our best to give students opportunity. Here are our students last year who went um, skiing in the Alps on a skiing trip. The students next to them are sitting there getting ready to um, actually perform to their parents um, in front of the Heller Up staircase, because those students had been to see Shrek on the West End. And they don't just go and see the show, of course, they go and work with the actors afterwards. And, and believe it or not, two years ago, um, we went to see Oliver, um, and one of the young men there was talent spotted. He subsequently performed on the West End um, on the, on the, as the part of the Oliver cast. He's currently touring the world as the young Michael Jackson. I can't promise that for your child, but you never know. Um, I think going abroad is, is such a great experience to experience new cultures. Um, this was a photo taken by our students on the, the Paris trip. Um, no shock there. Uh, but you know, last year we did trips to Germany, to Spain. Um, where else did we go? Well, the year before we did a, a tour of America playing football. Um, we lost a few more times than I would have liked against the Americans. You'd think we'd be better at soccer than they are. Um, we've done a tour to um, Spain playing netball. Um, to such an extent, I'm not going to list them all, actually we produce a brochure each year, it's like a holiday brochure, uh, which you'll get where you'll be able to choose what trips you would like your child to go on, because we recognise there's so many opportunities here that they can't access everything. Um, but we also help out in other ways, um, these two students, um, um, they're off to Ghana at Easter, um, in Africa, um, to work with a local community out there, um, and the parents have not had to find a penny because these are enterprising young students. These two young ladies designed and made these bags, um, wrote a press release, so they've been in the Rutland Times, have appeared in almost every craft fair going recently, and have been earning their way into the Ghana trip by the money they've raised. There's another young man who's kept my log fire going at home, because he's been chopping wood and then selling it in order to make his money. And I could go on. Enterprise is such a critical skill. But I think for it to be real, it's got to have a real outcome and a real purpose. And I think that's what we do here, is we make sure that what we offer has some real purpose and real outcome. And sometimes we have students who have a talent that we've not come across before. You know, the young gentlemen who made those clips, the film at the beginning, clearly have talent. Yes, we've helped 
facilitate it and support them, but no doubt they've got something inside them that's quite special. And we use our links with local industry and national industry to give them experience, which again, you wouldn't normally see in a secondary school. And these young gentlemen, we have contacts down at the BBC, and we got them a tour of the BBC studios. There's a beautiful film that they put together afterwards that you can see being shown on the Heller Up. And this, of course, is them interviewing Hugh Edwards whilst he was having a break between news clips. Once in a lifetime, things come up as well, which we weren't expecting necessarily. But we don't let that go by. We manage to get secure a whole load of Olympic tickets. And so our students went down to the Olympic Park and experienced the Olympics for the day. The Olympic torch came past the college, and so we all went out, every single one of us, to see that moment, a moment that none of us, I don't think, will ever forget. And it's those moments which I think really build up so that students want to come to college. They want to learn, they want to work hard, and they want to do their best. And that is really, really important. Anyway, there's these two characters, Billy and Poppy. Um, these are my head boy and head girl. Um, they don't just get to be head boy and head girl, they have to earn it. They fill in an application form. They write a personal statement. They're competing with their fellow students. I think this year there were about 30 students who applied for each of head boy and head girl. It's the toughest set of interviews I do. It's harder to appoint head boy and head girl than it is any other position I do because the competition and the talent is so strong. So, now I've built them up, I will hand over to Billy and Poppy. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Camus College. My name is Poppy Spencer and I am head girl and to my left is Billy Hunt, our head boy. This evening we are going to talk to you about some of the fantastic experiences and memories that we have collected throughout our time at Camus College. Most of you may recognise the college for our outstanding musicals that take place every year. In 2011, Catmus produced the amazing performance Hairspray. I was lucky enough to be involved being a lead dancer, and because I already enjoyed and took part in dance outside of school, this was the perfect opportunity for me to broaden my skills and have fun. As a group of lead dancers, we were also involved in the performance as actors, and due to thoroughly enjoying this, I now take drama as a GCSE, showing how extracurricular activities can shape your future. This year, our school musical is We Will Rock You, which I am thoroughly excited to audition for. Another aspect of the musical at the school is the band. I've played in this twice in years seven and nine, and having done this, I can say that it is a fantastic experience. Not only does it develop your musical knowledge and skills, but it also creates lasting friendships and builds up confidence, which will stay with your child for not only their time at the college, but also their time afterwards. Of course, this isn't the only way they can get involved in the school. Personally, I've been part of the orchestra and am now running the school jazz band. I've also come second in the talent show. Unfortunately, I lost to the novelty act coming first, but we won't talk about that too much. Um, all of this is accompanied by fantastic music lessons. I started playing drums in year seven and am now taking a grade eight exam in December. As a school, we also offer the Arts Award. Through this, I had to teach a lesson. This increased my confidence and my skills, encouraging me to choreograph 120 students in Alice in Wonderland, which I was excited to hear an Ofsted inspector graded as outstanding. When my group did the Arts Award, we taught a group of younger students how to play music in a group together. This has now led to me to, led to, me to become a music teacher in my own time outside of school. Throughout my years at Catmus College, I've committed to and enjoyed a variety of sports. I've taken part in netball, hockey, football, rounders, athletics and dance. All of these activities would give your child the opportunity to build new and stronger friendships with those who also share a love for sport, as it has for me. As a school, we recently finished first in the Melton and Rutland School Varsity Championships. Over 300 students took part in a variety of sports, including netball, football and hockey. It's memorable moments like this that make Catmus a special place to be involved with. Although we have many sports teams, you are able to get involved with courses for qualifications. In Year 9, I took part in Sports Leader, which has progressed into volunteering locally in my free time. A highlight of this was the Top Links Festival, where I led a variety of activities to primary school children which were based around the Olympics. There is other ways that your child can get involved in sport and different things in the school. Personally, I've just finished my Silver Duke of Edinburgh Award, 
which has developed canoeing skills for me. I got a level three award after 12 weeks of training, showing how different activities can develop different skills. Another part of the college that makes it stand out from other schools is our highly varied electives programme which all students are involved in. This takes place as part of the school curriculum and allows your child to develop a skill they may already have, such as a sport or musical instrument, or something completely new such as a language, culture or even food technology. Through electives I was given the opportunity to go on the performing arts tour in Italy. A part of this, as a part of this, I had to do a flash mob in the middle of Verona this has not only increased my music and drama skills, but given me the confidence to speak as I am now in front of large crowds. There is a very wide range of electives in, available at the school. Personally, while I've been at school, I've done photography, music technology, and I'm now doing a public speaking elective, which, as you can see, is helping me right now. Although our school has provided us with many exciting extracurricular activities, we never fail to produce outstanding academic results. We hope you've learnt a bit more about the school from our talk and we will now pass back over to our head, who will continue. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to go straight on to exam results actually. I want to show you this photo which is the, um, the varsity team. Uh, I can't fit them all on. Uh, as Poppy said, there's about 300 of them. And I wanted to show you this because it, it gives you an idea of how strong Catmus is as a team. Yeah, we're great as individuals, but as a team we're unbeatable. Um, and the Melton and Varsity competition set us against every school in the local area, competing across something like 15 different sports. And to come first was a real achievement for the college, and one that we all celebrate, because that's what we do here. We celebrate each other's successes, and we look after each other when things perhaps don't go quite so well. But exam results. Um, these are our exam results over the last five or six years. Um, as you can see, back in 2007, um, we were national average. Um, by 2012, you can see how large the gap is. People talk about grade inflation. However, we've beaten the national average every single year for the last five years and increased the margin. And when you consider that this year there was a dip in national performance, our results still went up. Over 90% of students gained five good GCSEs. That's a significant achievement and again, of course, a real team effort. Um, this is, of course, the, the A star to C benchmark. Um, we're interested in how every individual does and that's why we look at other aspects of their performance as well on a very individual level. This is the A's and A stars, the very highest grade you can achieve at GCSE. And again, you can see the quite stratospheric rise in A and A star results over the last few years. To such an extent that this year over a quarter of the grades the students achieved here were ARA star. Over 30 students left here with at least seven A's or A stars and half the cohort with at least three. You know, that is a significant academic performance because although the soft skills are important that we've been talking about, actually we also need to equip people for their next steps about going on to A levels, going on to college or going on to apprenticeships and make sure they're ready for university. And so, don't get me wrong, the academic results and performance is really critical. And we achieve them um, through what I've said earlier about the opportunities and developing talent and those real memorable things, but it's more than that. The way we approach the curriculum is very different. It's a bespoke curriculum that we offer. Particular students get us into year 10 and 11, we offer very individual timetables. When you come to choose your options in year nine, which won't be that long away, believe me, you won't have to choose from certain blocks that fit in with how the school timetable is. You will choose the subjects you want, advised by your parents, of course. <laughs> and we will write the timetable around what you choose, not what fits with us as a system. Because that's what we do at Catmus. We treat you as individuals, as people. I always think of us a bit like John Lewis. Do you hell's shops at John Lewis? I shop at John Lewis not because the buildings are nice and it's nice customer service on the sales end. I shop at John Lewis because when something goes wrong and you go back, they put it right for you. And that's what we do here. We don't promise to get every single thing right. What we do say, however, is if we've got something wrong, tell us about it because we want to make it better. 
and we don't tend to make the same mistake twice. And that goes for the curriculum. Um, and I'll just give you a tease out a few examples here of the sort of curriculum we offer. Um, we offer a full range of science courses. So we offer, as many comprehensives do, the additional double award science. But actually, I don't think that prepares students as well as it could for A-level. And so we also offer the separate sciences, physics, chemistry, and biology, as individual sciences. And Billy's fortunate enough to have me as his physics teacher. I'm not sure he feels that every day, especially when he's got homework due tomorrow. Um, we also offer music, but not just the BTEC music, but also the GCSE academic course, which actually Billy was having a lesson after college in. Um, we also offer for the first time this year, because we're always looking for those new opportunities again. Um, a lot of schools are just doing um, what's called ICT, which is how to use a word processor, how to do a presentation. Actually, our students come from primary schools knowing how to do that. We want to take them to the next level. And so we're teaching them how to program the computers. And we're starting that in year seven. And then when it comes to their options, they have the choice to do a GCSE in computer science, a real academic subject that teaches them real skills about problem solving that are critical to be successful when you get a job. We've also introduced, as many independent schools have, the IGCSE course. And we offer that to our most able mathematicians and English students because we want to stretch them. We know they can get A's and A stars at GCSE, but actually we know they could do a little bit better, and the IGCSE will give them that opportunity and make sure that when they go on to A level, they're ready for that step, and it's not such a large one. And I'm pleased to say that I, I, we keep in touch with students, and the, the last cohort that left and have just finished their A levels and are just going off to university, five of them are off to Oxford or Cambridge, studying natural sciences, humanities, and law subjects. Because what we do here does stay with students. Um, Stephanie, who, who's off to do natural sciences actually at Cambridge, she came back to visit and wants to go and meet her old teachers and thank them personally for the work they'd done with her, the extra mile that they'd gone, the after school sessions they'd stay, stuck with her, the one-to-one -one tuition that they had with her outside of lessons when she was struggling with a particular topic. Because again, that's what we do. If your child is struggling, we will help them. This photo means a lot to me. Um, it says so much about our ethos. Um, some of you won't know this, but we don't have a staff room here. We chose not to, because actually we believe that this is a school where we should all be working together. And if the staff disappear off to a staff room at lunchtime, I don't think that's a good, good message to send. So we sit with the students and have lunch with them. We work with them over breaks and lunches, and we socialise. And I think that's important. And this photo sums up an awful lot of that. This is the Grade 1 Music Challenge. This was set by Mr Sammy up there with his flute. And he put it out, learn a new musical instrument. One that you've never studied before. And what's great about this photograph is you've got teachers on there, you've got an art technician, you've got a couple of teaching assistants. You've actually got, believe it or not, our design technology teacher who I was talking about earlier. All learning something new alongside students. I'm pleased to say they all passed. The certificates are available if you'd like to have a look. And although Mr. Sammy was very, very worried about this, he, he did manage a distinction, to be fair. We're also a very traditional school. We do use new technologies extensively. We do look at creative ways of teaching. But I think traditional values still have a place about mutual respect, about working hard about attending every day, about coming smartly dressed, about having a pride in your own appearance, about looking out for each other. Um, these are the senior team, and of course Billy and Poppy appear again. Um, the other people are the deputy head boys and girls. Um, what you'll see is the badges, and each of those badges is an honour or, or a responsibility that they've had to earn. None are given freely. You don't, you're not allowed to wear a badge here unless you've earned it. Because we believe in personal responsibility and having a pride about what we're, what we're achieving. So you will see students with Arts Award ba badges that have been earned in Year 9. That's a GCSE level course. You'll see students with Ambassador badges for the different subjects around the colleges. 
They had to apply for those positions and be chosen for them by the, by the heads of each of the subject areas. You will see head boy and head girl badges and prefect badges. You'll see attendance badges, bronze, silver and gold. You have to be here at least 96% of the time to get a bronze for the whole year. We set our standards very high. I'll finish by giving you an insight into what I think and how I make my decisions. And it's quite simple, really. I am a man after all. It's these two. For those who don't know, this is Martha on the right. She dreams of being an astronaut. And who knows, she might make it. Who am I to say she can't? I think if a student has a dream, we should do what we can to support them to achieve it. And there's Laura, just started school. And what's great is she comes home and says, I had a brilliant day, Daddy. And I want that to continue. And that's what guides my decision making. Because if the service and the provision that we offer for you wouldn't be good enough for my own children, how could I say it would be good enough for any of your children? And that really is my touchstone. It has to be something that I would be happy for my two children to access. So I hope I've given you a little bit of an insight into Catmus College. But as you can see, there is an awful lot going on. So please, do take the time to talk to students, talk to staff, have a good look round. I'd highly recommend coming in on a normal working day, seeing as we are when it's not an open evening, because I think that gives you a greater insight to what a wonderful school this is. I'll finish there, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come and see me at the end. Thank you for listening.